Hey YouTube, hey friends out there in the world. I'm Ashley and this is The Remix. Today I wanted to talk to y'all about depression and mainly though, how to find your happy. Uh, how to pull yourself out of that depression uh, that's caused by alopecia. So let's begin, shall we? And I'm gonna do this new vegan palette it's Kat Von D. I love her um, pigmentation. It's fabulous. And we're going to start with um, a color called Dimensions and end with a color called Abyss. And maybe throw some pink sparkle in. Who knows? So, um, I've, I've always dealt with depression in some form or another my entire life. So, I can tell the difference between depression that's just regular life depression that everyone goes through from time to time or most people do um and depression from alopecia and the difference if i can find my brush is that with at regular with alopecia depression it's all because of this one thing, your hair. It's all because of the hair. I mean, we all, all alopecians out there know, that, or anyone that is bald or is missing hair knows that 90% of their sadness and depression would go away if their hair came back. So... We know that that's the thing, That's but we can't fix the cause. It's not like normal depression. You can't go to see a therapist about it. You can't take medicine for it. There's no really known cure. You know, there's treatments that do wonders, but there's no real cure, and everyone is different. So, I got to a point where I literally did not want to get out of bed after I completely lost my hair. Um, I still did. I went through the routines. I'm a mother. I have a child to take care of after all. And I went through the motions of life, but I wasn't happy. I felt, I just felt like I'm never gonna be happy again unless I have hair. Let me see how this is looking. Hmm. Okay, not so bad. So, um, and I don't know if any of you know this, but when you are going through a depression for any reason, it changes your brain chemistry and it makes you start thinking the very worst of yourself. Um, you start putting yourself down internally. And I started beating myself up and saying, you know, this is somehow my fault. It's not worth it. I'm not worth it. I'm a nothing. Like, what have I become? I'm just a bald nothing. And that's how I felt. I felt like I truly wasn't worth the things that I was. Um... And by that, I mean just your normal feminine things that you would do for yourself, like going to get a pedicure or putting on makeup. I stopped doing it. I thought, you're not worth that. You're a hairless nothing. Like, you're such a hairless nothing. Like, you don't deserve. You can't. It's not even possible for you to look beautiful, I thought to myself. So why even try? And I thought, I'm just going to live this life as a recluse and if it comes back we'll see what happens um and and that's where I was and it got to the point where I didn't want to shower especially when my hair was before it fell out because as you most of you with alopecia know when you take a shower a lot of your hair falls out and you see it in the drain and it's it's sort of scarring to go through every time. Like, I used to dread showers. So, I have to force myself to take a shower 
um, force myself to get up. And I kept doing this every day, but I still, I still wasn't happy. And I, no matter what I did, it just, I just thought, you know, without hair, I tried wigs. They just really weren't for me. Maybe in the future, but not right now. Um, and then one day, one really funny day, I woke up and you ever have those days when you just wake up and you're in a good mood for no reason? And I woke up and I walked in my bathroom I looked in the mirror and I just looked at my bald little self and I just started laughing and I was like, good morning, Mrs. Clean, like Mr. Clean. <laughs> and I just started dying laughing and I just, I totally broke that wall of just silence and, and non laughter. I just, Something about me, just, I had to laugh at myself at that point. And once I was able to laugh at myself, uh, that was the beginning of really great future days. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I then decided I'm going to go on a quest to do whatever it is to make me happy. Because I think stress and happiness and all those things play a huge role in this disorder. Um, so, I started doing little things like yoga and things I like to do. Um, I really enjoy stand-up comedy. Let's try a little sparkly pink. Because I think if any, if you can go out on stage and make someone laugh just for a living, like that's a true gift. So I started watching some stand up comedy. Um, I tried to look for the funny, the humor in life, just in general. Ooh, that looks kind of pretty. Um, I, commercials, y'all. I know this sounds crazy, but I know everyone has seen some of those stupid <laughs> commercials for, like, pharmaceuticals and different things where the actors are just so terrible. <laughs> so, even if it's something as small as, um, laughing at commercials, find something that, um, makes you happy. Or it takes your mind off of it, at least. That could be, you know, playing a game on a phone or whatever. Um, but yeah, the commercials cracked me up, the stand-up comedy. So every day, now, I make it a point to get up and make myself happy. And if I wake up... And I don't feel like I'm going to be in a happy mood. The first thing I do is, like, get on YouTube or some platform and find something that makes me laugh. And that can get me started going in the day, you know. And then I'm able to take a shower. And <laughs> you must take a shower. <laughs> So, um, I started to finally realize that I wasn't just a nothing, that just because I lost my hair, you know, doesn't mean that I'm a nothing. It just means I don't have any hair. Um, and <sighs> I finally laughed. I remember... Oh, memes were another thing, by the way. Let me find this lip gloss. Memes, any any little thing, just whatever you, I mean, just whatever you can laugh at, laugh at. And I want to say this to all the younger listeners out there. 
watchers, I should say, out there. Um, the first time I had alopecia, I was 15 years old, and all my hair grew back, and it stayed that way for 20 years. But um, you have such an advantage. Um, I was born in 1984, so today you have such an advantage. There are more treatments. There, when I was first diagnosed, there was hardly any treatments at all. Um, there was no such thing as microblading or the temporary tattoos. There were no such thing as the fake eyelashes or magnetic eyelashes. You couldn't get those sort of things unless it was Halloween. Like, there was no internet to order anything off of wigs. Like, if you were lucky enough to have a wig shop in your town, like, that was the way that you would have gotten wigs. So I just want to say that I know it's a hard time for you out there, especially at this age, but I wouldn't want to go through it again, but I do know that it made me stronger and it definitely prepared me for bullies in life because uh, it's, it's not something that I would wish to go through again, losing my hair when I'm 15 and dealing with that. But it prepared me for all those people, all those people that are mean to you in high school, they just grow up and become adult, like, you know, asses. Like they're, <laughs> it's the same people. They just grow up. So... If you can learn to deal with it now, you're going to be able to handle yourself just fine when you're an adult. And that was the one thing it prepared me for because I was born with a cleft lip. I've been made fun of my whole life for everything. So I don't think now, I don't think there's one person that could like upset me or you know, get under my skin at this point. There's, I, I've been through too much. It will make you stronger. And, um, and kids made fun of me. You know, they were like, oh, you know, she has, she has cancer. And I'm like, if I had cancer, would you make fun of me? Like, that's what the teenagers said in my high school. And I can imagine now with social media, it's not fun, but your options are so much better. And the hope for all these new um, drugs that are coming out, hopefully, um, in the next few years, things will turn around and we can all find our happy. But until then, I want you all to at least try every day to get up and find a reason to laugh. Even if it's something really stupid, even if it's ridiculous, find something to laugh about and build on that and go from there and take a shower every day and, you know, slowly start doing the things, the steps that it takes to get you a little bit back. And don't get me wrong, I still have my bad days. Like, they're still going to happen. But then the next day, you dust yourself off, and you pick yourself up, and you carry on, because that's all we can do. And pull your own happy wagon. The one thing that alopecia has taught me is that it's not the material things in life or the false beauty of having my gorgeous blonde hair that make me happy. It's the people I love. It's the laughter I bring to myself and ha and who I surround myself with. And if alopecia has taught me anything, it has taught me that. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, I love chatting with you. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And stay strong, Alopecians. You're going to get through this. We are all in this together. 
and I love you guys so much. Have a great day.